Hi guys, Viking Reefing here. For the uh, past eight months or so, I've been experimenting with um, ways to optimize the pH of my tank. And I would, I thought I would uh, show you guys the results. When I started trying to increase the pH of my tank, my daytime pH hovered around 8.1 and my nighttime pH was about 7.9 or so. Which, in truth, isn't horrible, but it's not great either. Um, so let's uh, go through a timeline of what I did and what the uh, results that I got was. Um, stick to the end because I managed to achieve some pretty awesome results with minimal work. So. Uh, Bear with me here. The first thing I tried was to uh, switch up my uh, dosing of Kalkwasser to only be dosing it in the evenings uh, because I've always been using Kalkwasser on my tanks um, and I've had good benefits from doing so. Uh, but I try, but I did try to uh, see if I could manipulate the dosages somehow and see if I get can get some better results, uh, mainly flatten out the curve somewhat. So I was dosing about 5 liters of Kalkwasser daily uh, into the tank. Uh, so that was basically my auto top off. Uh, so what I did was I switched all that dosing uh, from 10 in the evening to I believe 5 in the morning or so. Which meant that I was uh, getting all my uh, evaporation or compensating for all my evaporation during the evenings. Uh, that actually did help quite a bit. Um, I believe my nighttime pH went up to about 8.1 or so, and my daytime pH went up to 8.35. Uh, or some somewhere around there. Uh, I've constantly also been running a refugium on a reverse light cycle, which means that it's illuminated once the uh, lights of the main tank are off, um, so keep that in mind. I then started uh, using the Martin Reef system for uh, calcium, alkaline, and magnesium, and a bunch of other trace elements and stuff. Um, and since that's a uh, system that is based on uh, well, you're, you're basically dosing um, in accordance with your consumption, and that all adds all the trace elements and amino acids and stuff like that as well. So I couldn't really be using any separate way to be adding calcium and alkalinity because uh, it would, well, throw off the entire system. So I started, when I started that, I took off the uh, Kalkwasser. Uh, and I, well, I fell right back down uh, into the... Um, my own, my old levels again, uh, which wasn't great. Well, maybe it had a slight bump since I now have more corals, um, and I think the modern reef additives do provide a fairly decent pH boost as well, uh, but not close to what I was looking for. So I was uh, thinking, uh, so what can I do about this? And I came up with the idea to use a um, CO2 scrubber uh, to basically scrub out all the CO2 from the ambient air that goes into the tank, uh, which worked quite well, um, but it was a real hassle. Uh, the um, media lasted about two weeks or so uh, and it got old fast to have to uh, unscrew that thing, replace the media uh, constantly, and it got kind of expensive as well. Um, and the thing was that I also have a fresh air vent in my sump room. Uh, so I, I have uh, a um, air changer for the entire house and I had them install a fresh, fresh air vent uh, in my sump room uh, just to make sure that all the air in there isn't this stuffy basement air. So, well, I do have fresh air uh, going in. So there aren't a huge amount of CO2 uh, in the air to be scrubbed out really uh, and even then all the uh, media was used up in maximum of three weeks um, so that got really old and i started thinking about what actually produces the uh, carbon dioxide which lowers your ph 
Um, and I'd say that the main issue here at least, since I do have fresh air in my entire basement, uh, isn't a high CO2 content in the air itself. It's actually the fish that's um, causing the breeding and producing uh, uh, carbon dioxide on all the other little vertebrates as well. So my conclusion was that it would be much more beneficial to actually remove carbon dioxide from the water itself, not just from the ambient air, because carbon dioxide will be added constantly by the fish, fish breathing in the tank. Um, and my solution for this was to build a uh, recirculating CO2 scrubber. Um, I'll show it in a little bit. But the results I've got from that are mind-boggling. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video now is that I wanted to see how long the media lasts in this kind of setup. And I, I, think I, I think I added it about four months ago. So the media has been running for four months and now I'm seeing a decrease. Uh, I'll show some charts here on the screen so you can see my results. But once the media was completely fresh and it stayed that way for four months, my daytime pH was hovering around 8.7 and my nighttime pH was about 8.52 or so. So imagine that. Um, you have an extremely high pH which really did help in terms of core growth and uh, you don't really have to do anything to achieve that compared to when I had the just standard setup CO2 scrubber which I constantly had to refill or the caulk washer which in, in fairness, do get cut quite messy. You have to mess around with those uh, bins. There's a lot of uh, um, slurry on the bottom. It breaks pumps uh, eventually. Um, it calcifies on the uh, outlet of your dosing pump and it just clogs the line and things of that nature. Um, so this is probably what I would recommend to anybody who has the ability to uh, put in such a unit. Um, so let's go and have a look at it. Um, this is something that you can build yourself uh, for whatever strange reason, at least not here in Europe. There's no ready-made options for a recirculating CO2 scrubber, which I guess is logical because the ones that are producing these things are generally selling you media as well. So why would they produce a unit which makes the media lasts eight times longer or something. They would be losing revenue at that point. Um, but let's go and have a look at it. And I'll show you how you can easily build one of these things for around 30 to 40 euros. Um, keep in mind, all the parts that I used are things that I found in Sweden. So you might not be able to find exactly on the same parts if you're in uh, the States, for example. But I would be... Uh, uh, willing to bet that there's something similar at least. So, welcome to my sump room. My messy sump room at that. Well, here's my skimmer. And I use, I'm using the um, uh, Bubble King Superman 250 for more exclusive, but you can do this on, I guess, any skimmer. Uh, you might need some modifications uh, if it's not set up this way. Uh, right out of, of the gate, but should be relatively easy, easy to, do, to do so. This skimmer has four holes in its lid. Uh, I've used three of them for these carbon cups just to get rid of some smell of ozone and like, well, stinky fish poop stuff. Uh, for the fourth hole right here, I put in a PVC pipe. Um, if you have a Royal Exclusive skimmer, you can get these at uh, the Royal Exclusive website, I believe I got it from. Um, but anyways, so I have a, a PVC pipe here, which I've just pushed on the silicone uh, tubing. So the silicone tubing goes up here. It's this one, goes up to this cabinet. Sorry about the mess. That's the beauty of cabinets. So you can just shove stuff in there and no one will see it. So this is uh, the actual recirculating CO2 scrubber. Uh, the media I'm using is medical grade stuff, um, but it's not color changing. Um, so that's why I uh, had to wait for the uh, actual pH in the tank to drop to know when I'm supposed to be changing it. 
But anyways, the skimmer obviously draws air here from the silencer. So it draws air from the lid right here. Air goes up here, here, into this canister. This is just basically a food uh, storage thingamajig. You can store rice or stuff, uh, that kind of stuff in those things. Um, I put in some kind of like bulkheads here with elbows with thread fittings for a pipe. So there it goes into here. It filters down the um, CO2 media. I put in some like rough sponge here just to make sure that it doesn't clog or anything here. Um, what you want to be uh, careful about is making sure that your implementation doesn't mean that uh, you get like striping or something. Because if I put in both the inlet and outlet like here, the air would most likely just go straight down here. Um, since it's on opposite ends, the uh, air will exit here and will be filtered down through the entire canister. Um, you can, you can do this just with one canister. I have two just to uh, increase increase the lifespan since I have a fairly large tank and I can just swap them around as well. Uh, the air goes into here, through this pipe here, into this canister. Same basic operation. It goes into here and it goes up into here. And then the skimmer draws the air here which is completely free of CO2 at this point. Goes down here. Goes down this tube into the silencer. Then it goes right back into the skimmer. Oops. Right here. Um, so what this means is that you're not actually just removing stuff from the uh, outside air, you're actually removing CO2 from the water itself, which is much more effective. I also run my refugium. Um, if you have seen my uh, previous videos, I used to have my refugium here with an ugly ass DIY light bracket and some sort of uh, sheep uh, grow lights here. And I had my cry cryptic sump here. Uh, I've now got my hands on a uh, AI blade uh, refugium lights. Uh, which fit perfectly over this compartment in the uh, sump. So, um, yeah, switch that around. Uh, I still have this on a um, on a reverse light cycle, so uh, uh, I'm trying to mitigate that. Oh, the ATO turned on. Damn thing. Uh, so I'm trying to mitigate the um, drop I get during the evenings. So a modification I will, will be doing in a bit, when, once I find the time, uh, is to try to mitigate any sort of dip during the evenings. And also, I really don't have to have such high pH as 8.7. I don't think there's any huge benefit of that. Um, I would be very happy if I can just maintain it at uh, the constant rate of 8.5. Uh, I've seen some uh, actual negative effects on my ORP uh, for whatever reason if you have very high pH. There seems to be a inverse effect on ORP with very high pH. I can't really find any good data uh, to show why that is. If someone has any uh, good links or something I would be very happy to uh, go over uh, those. But I what I will do is that I will be putting in a motorized ball valve uh, right around here or something. Uh, what this will help me achieve is to I'll do some program logic in my GHL uh, Proflux. Uh, I'll hook it into an outlet on my power bar. And if the pH goes above 8.5, I will have the ball valve close this way and have it open up a gate so that it will be sucking in ambient air. So what I figure is that most mostly during the day it will probably be sucking ambient air um, and at night it will probably be closing so I'll be utilizing the um, recirculating CO2 scrubber. This would also make the media uh, last a lot longer I guess um, and uh, based on my results I'll probably have to change it like every eight months or something like that. So, so this is a super simple way to achieve 
your dream pH uh, of your reef tank. Um, uh, it's very low cost. There's basically no maintenance whatsoever. Um, so I would highly recommend you trying it out. Um, I have no idea why it's not more commonly used in the uh, reefing hobby, uh, but you should really give it a go. If you have any questions about how I made everything or anything else in regards to pH, please, please post them down below. Um, I'll be happy to help. I think that's it for today. I hope you gained some valuable information. Thank you for watching and happy reefing. Bye.